Hi, in this 56th video on financial math for actuarial exam 2, we're going to be looking at problem 2.3.17s. We will be finding an interest rate for an investment with a given yield that's obtained from reinvestment in a different account of interest from the first account as an increasing annuity. And as we did in video number 42, we're going to take the opportunity to use built-in financial functions on the calculator to help us solve the problem. So the problem says this, Victor invests 300 into a bank account at the beginning of each year for 20 years. So that's an annuity due. The account pays out interest at the end of every year at an effective annual interest rate of I. Actually, the textbook writes this as I percent, but it would be simpler to just write it as an I and think of it as a decimal. That interest from the first account is reinvested in a different account with a different effective annual rate of I over 2. The yield rate on the entire investment over the 20-year period is 8% effective annual. The goal is to determine I. Oftentimes when you determine I, especially in the context of annuities, you have to use built-in financial functions or guessing and testing. So using the built-in financial functions is a good idea. So this is the timeline. Time is going to be in years. Let's think of this as the first account with effective annual interest rate I. 300 gets deposited right away. These are at the beginning of each year. This is an annuity due for 20 years. So the last 20th payment will be 300 at time 19. But then you've got a reinvestment of interest into a different account with effective annual interest rate I over 2. The interest at time 1 from the first account is 300i. That's what gets deposited 300 times i into the second account at time 1. At the end of the second year, you had 600 in account 1. That was growing. And so you're going to have 600i for the amount of interest that you earn from the first account at time two that gets deposited into, into the second account, etc. The second account has payments going into it that form an annuity immediate. Let's see, with 20 of them, the last one's going to be 6,000i. The second to the last one's going to be 5,700 times i. All right, let's write down an expression representing uh, the future value at time 20 of this entire stream of money here in these two accounts. We've got, first of all, the, the 6,000 coming from the first account, 300 times 20. We reinvested the interest, so we don't think of any interest as being in that account. We also reinvest the interest at time 20 at that last amount there, 6,000i. So we have 6,000 in the first account. In the second account, it's an, it's an increasing annuity immediate the future value is going to be 300i times i s sub 20. And the interest rate for that one is going to be that one right there, i over 2. This is an i there, not an i over 2. That's coming from the first account. 300i is the interest earned from the first account in the first year. But this needs to be an i over 2 because that's the interest rate for the second account. All right, let's simplify this. What is the formula for this future value of an increasing annuity immediate? Uh, hopefully you recall it's a little funny. It's actually the future value of an annuity due with that same interest rate i over 2 minus n, the number of payments, which is 20 all divided by the interest rate for that account, which is i over 2. It's a little funny. Yeah, that's right. That's an annuity due there. We can continue to simplify. This i cancels with this i. 300 divided by 1 half is 600. We can write this as 6,000 plus 600 s double dot sub 20 i over 2 minus 20. And I could continue simplifying if I wanted to. I'm, I'm actually not going to simplify it more than this. I'm ultimately going to solve for this, uh, this future value of an annuity due before I solve for i. What does this have to equal? Now you need to bring the yield rate into account. 
the yield rate of 8% comes from thinking about the yield you're getting on your investment, which really was this annuity due of level payments of 300 at the beginning of each year. So the um, future value can also be written as 300 times S double dot sub 20 corresponding to the yield rate, 0 0.08. And we can find out what this is. This is going to be 300 times 1.08 to the 20th power minus 1 over D, the discount rate, for this 8% rate, but that's the same as 0 0.08 divided by 1.08. So let's go ahead and see what this is. 0 0.08 divided by 1.08, the discount rate is about 7.4%. I'll store that and register 0. 1.08 to the 20th power is this. Subtract 1 divide by what's in register 0, and now multiply by 300. 14,826.88, or if you prefer 87643 to carry more decimal places, is what the future value is based on this 8% annual yield rate. This has got, these two things have to be equal. And we can take this equation and solve for this future value of an annuity due based on interest rate I over 2. Let me go ahead and do that. I, I won't bother storing anything more in the calculator. I will subtract 6,000 from both sides, then divide both sides by 600, then add 20 to both sides. Let's go ahead and do that. First subtract 6,000. Now divide by 600. Now add 20. There we have it. S double dot. Sub 20 with interest rate I over 2 equals 34.711460712. We now want to solve for I over 2. And once we have I over 2, then we'll have I. So how do you do that? Now we're going to use the financial functions. Again, I showed this to you in video number 42. Uh, again, the first thing I typically do is make sure my payments per year and compounding periods per year are set to 1, which um, in video 42, I always thought I actually thought of those as payments per month and compounding periods per month. But here we are in years. Uh, we can make sure that that's the case by doing second and then this button, CP slash Y there. One payment per year and one compounding per year period per year. Let me arrow down to see that. Yep, that looks good. All right, what do we do next? Uh, we want to use this information before I before I pull. Uh, hit my buttons involving future value and PMT and I and N, I need to uh, deal with the fact that this is an annuity due and payments are made at the beginning of each period for annuities due. Um, I can get there by and make that setting by going in second PMT. You see this BGN there? It's, it's um, as a default sent to the, set to the end of each period. I can change this to the beginning, BGN, by now doing second enter, which you see the word set there. That's what I'm really doing. Second set. Now it says BGN. Now it's set to the beginning. It's thinking of it now as an annuity due, which is what we want. So now I'll go ahead and plug in this future value. 34 point, oops, not there. 34 point, you see the BGN up here as well, by the way. 71146072. That is the future value. I'm going to press the FV button. That quantity is now stored in the variable called FV. We've got 20 payments. N is 20. Press the N button. That's stored in N now. Uh, the payments are of 1 when you are thinking of the equation this way. And again, as in video 42, I said to enter that as a negative number. 1, negative, and press the PMT button. That's the payments. It's just a convention for how you use the calculator in this way. Now we want to solve for the unknown interest rate, which is going to represent I over 2, by the way, again. Press CPT for compute. 
and then i slash for y for interest per year is computing. There we go, about five, and that is as a percent. So divided by 100, i over 2 is about 0 0.05. And therefore, the answer to the question is that i is about 0 0.10. And that does solve the problem. OK, so again, practice with the calculator. Here was the problem. Make sure you can do that kind of thing. That's definitely helpful instead of guessing and testing on an exam.